In this video, we're going to talk about how to draw free body diagrams. So let's start with this problem. Let's draw the free body diagram for each of the following situations. So for part A, we have a box that is resting on a table. How can we draw the free body diagram for that? A free body diagram is a picture that shows all of the forces acting on an object. So here we have a box. What forces is acting on this box? Well, we know that there's always going to be a weight force, which we can call W. The weight force is equal to the mass times the gravitational acceleration. On Earth, G is 9.8 meters per second squared. Now, the surface also exerts a force. The surface exerts a force, which is known as the normal force. The normal force is always perpendicular to the surface. It's at a 90 degree angle. Now, because these two are equal, because the box is at rest, the normal force is going to be equal to mg. Now, because they're equal, you want the length of these two arrows to be approximately the same. So that's it for part A. This is the free body diagram that uh, we can draw to represent the box resting on a table. Okay, so now let's move on to part B. A block attached to a rope hangs from a ceiling. Draw the free body diagram for that. So let's say this is the ceiling and we're gonna have a block that is attached to one rope that connects the block to the ceiling. So what forces are acting on this block? So we have the weight force, which we can call W, or you can say F gravity. And we also have an upward tension force. Now, this block is at rest. It's not accelerating upward or downward. So the net force in the y direction is zero. Therefore, these two arrows should be of the same length. So in this example, the tension is equal to the weight force. And the weight force is mg. So the tension in the rope is simply mg. Tension is always the force that acts through a rope. Now what about part c? A block is pulled upward at constant velocity. To pull a block upward, we need a rope. So the block is moving upward at constant velocity. We're going to have a weight force, and we're going to have an upward tension force. Are these two forces the same, or are they different? At constant velocity, what is the acceleration? The acceleration is zero at constant velocity. The net force in the y direction is going to be the difference between the tension and the weight force. And according to Newton's second law, the net force, which is the sum of the forces, it's going to equal to m times a. So we can replace this with ma. Now, if the acceleration is zero, the net force is going to be zero. Add in W to both sides, we can see that the wave force and the tension force, they're the same. So by constant velocity, these two forces will cancel out because the acceleration is zero. So therefore, the length of the two arrows should be the same. So thus the tension in this problem is equal to the wave force, which is equal to mg. So that's all we need to do to show the free body diagram for part C. Now let's move on to part D. This time, a block is pulled upward with a constant acceleration. So the equation changes. So we can still write this equation. The sum of the forces in the y direction, that's still going to be equal to tension minus the weight force. And the net force in the y direction is going to be ma. 
you can put a sub y if you want to for acceleration in the y direction. So this is tension minus mg. If we move mg to the other side, notice that we have ma plus mg. So that's how you can calculate the tension for this example if there's an upward acceleration. So notice that tension is greater than mg. It's mg plus ma. Therefore, this arrow has to be longer than the arrow for the weight force or F gravity. So let's make this arrow significantly bigger than the other one. So if T is bigger than W, there's going to be an upward net force that's going to accelerate the block upward. Now what about E? A block, let's take this word out, a block descends lower with a downward acceleration using a rope. So in this case, the acceleration is negative if it's going down. The net force is going to be in the downward direction because it's descending lower with a downward acceleration. And the only way that's going to happen is if W is greater than T. So we're going to make this arrow smaller. We're going to make this one bigger. So now we have a, a downward acceleration because the weight force or the force of gravity is greater than the tension force. So that's it for E. That's the free body diagram that correlates to that situation. So now let's work on some more examples. For part A, we have a block that slides across a frictionless horizontal surface at constant speed. Go ahead and draw a free body diagram for that situation. So first we have a horizontal surface and then we have a block on that surface. And let's say it's moving to the right at constant speed. What forces are acting on this block? Well, anytime you have an object resting on a surface, there's going to be an upward normal force. And that upward normal force is going to be equal to the weight force. So we need to make sure the lengths of those two arrows are the same. Now, are there any forces in the x direction? If the object is moving at constant velocity, the net force or the sum of the forces in the x direction will be zero. There's no friction slowing this down. So we don't have friction. Therefore, there's no applied force accelerating it to the right. So there's no forces in the x direction here. So this is all we could show for the free body diagram for part A. Now, let's move on to part B. So in part B, we have an applied force that is used to push the box to the right at constant speed. So this is going to be the applied force. Now we still have a, num a normal force. So that's going to be present. And the wave force is still there. Now, the box is moving at constant speed. If it's moving at constant speed, the acceleration is zero. So the forces in the x direction must be balanced because the net force is zero in the x direction. So therefore, if the net force in the x direction must be zero, what other forces do we have? The only other force that could be acting in the x direction must be friction. Now, there's two types of frictional forces. There's static friction and kinetic friction. The word kinetic indicates that the object is in motion. And since this object is moving at constant speed, kinetic friction is active, which we'll call FK. Now, these two forces must be equal in order for the acceleration to be zero. So the arrow, these two arrows have to have the same length. 
So that's the answer for part B. Part C, an applied force is used to accelerate a box across a horizontal surface with friction present. So friction was already present in part B, but this time the box is not moving at constant speed. It's accelerating. So the acceleration is not zero. Because we have an acceleration, there's going to be a net force to the right. And the only way that's going to happen is if the applied force is greater than FK. So kinetic friction has to be relatively small compared to the applied force so that we can have a net acceleration to the right. So this is going to be the free body diagram for part C. Now what about part D? A rope is used to pull a block to the right across a horizontal surface with friction present at constant velocity. So the normal force and the weight force will still be the same for part D. We no longer have an acceleration. We're moving at constant velocity. So the forces in the X direction must be balanced. This time, we're using a rope to pull the block to the right. So that's going to be our tension force. And that's going to, the block is being pulled to the right against friction. Friction always opposes motion. So if we're moving to the right, friction is going to be directed to the left. So in this case, FK is going to be over here. And it's going to have the same left as the tension force vector. So this is the free body diagram that corresponds to the situation, the situation part D. Now let's move on to part E. A rope directed at 30 degrees above the horizontal is used to pull a block to the right across a horizontal surface with friction at constant acceleration. So we no longer have constant velocity. We're going to accelerate the block to the right. So the forces in the X direction will not be equal. Now, if we're pulling the block to the right, friction will still be directed towards the left. But if we're pulling it to the right with an acceleration, friction is going to be uh, less than the tension force. So we're going to draw a relatively small FK value to the left and a large tension force to the right, but at an angle. So that tension force has an X component and it has a Y component. It's directed at an angle of 30 degrees above the horizontal. The X component of the tension force is TX and TY is the Y component. In order to accelerate the block to the right, TX has to be greater than FK. Now, in other problems, the normal force was equal to MG, but that's not going to be the case in this example because of the Y component of T. The block is not accelerating upward or downward, so the net force in the Y direction is zero. And it's equal to these two upward forces, which is positive Fn plus positive Ty. And then we have a downward force, so this is going to be negative W. Now, because the block is not accelerating upward or downward, as was mentioned before, the net force in the Y direction is zero. So if we take these two terms, move it to the other side, we'll get that the normal force is equal to TY. It's actually going to be W, positive W minus TY. So the normal force is not MG in this problem. The normal force is the weight force, MG, but minus the Y component of the tension force.
So that's how you can calculate the normal force for this particular situation. Now what about calculating the acceleration of the block in the x direction? How can we come up with an, a formula that's going to help us to get that answer? Before we do that, let's talk about how to get ty and tx. Using Sokotoa and trigonometry, ty is equal to t sine theta. tx is equal to t cosine theta. So going back to trig, we have the expression Sokotoa. The so part means sine is equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse. So sine of the angle theta, theta is 30 degrees in this example, is equal to opposite, which is ty, divided by the hypotenuse, which is t. The hypotenuse is across the right angle. It's the longest side of the triangle. And so if you multiply both sides by t, you get ty is equal to t sine theta. For the other equation, we have cosine theta, so this is the cut part. Cosine is equal to the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse, which is t. So multiplying both sides by t, you get tx is equal to t cosine theta. So that's how you can get tx and ty in this problem if you know t. So you can plug t sine theta into this formula to get the normal force. But now, to get the acceleration in the x-direction, we need to start with this expression. The sum of the forces in the x-direction is tx. It's positive because it's going to the right. This is negative because it's going to the left. So it's tx minus fk. Now, the net force, which is the sum of the forces, is always equal to ma based on Newton's second law. So this is going to be m a sub x, acceleration in the x direction. Tx is t cosine theta. Now, fk is equal to mu k times the normal force. In this example, remember, the normal force is not just mg, it's mg minus ty. So I'm going to leave it like this. So first, you want to calculate tx and ty. Once you have that, calculate the normal force. When you have the normal force, you have everything you need to calculate the acceleration in that equation. So that's how we can find the acceleration in the x direction. It's by using that formula. Now, let's focus on free body diagrams with inclines. So part A, a block slides down a frictionless incline. Let's draw a picture. So here is our incline. And here is the box on the incline. What forces are acting on this box? So we have a downward weight force. We can just call that W. And we have a normal force. The normal force is less than the weight force. So that arrow should be smaller than W. The extent to which, like how much smaller, depends on the angle of the incline. As the angle of the incline increases, Fn becomes much smaller relative to W. So on an incline, the normal force is going to be mg cosine theta. As the angle increases from 0 to 90, cosine decreases from 1 to 0. So as theta goes up from 0 to 90, the normal force goes down. So the length of this arrow will get smaller as theta increases. Now what other forces do we have acting on this picture or the block? Now we have a component of gravity that will accelerate the block down the incline. And I'm going to call that Fg. Fg is equal to mg 
sine theta. So as the block slides down on an incline that does not have friction, it's not going down at constant speed. It's accelerating downward. The only way you can go down at constant speed is if friction is present and if it's equal to FG. But because friction is not present, this is the only force acting parallel to the incline. So there is an acceleration. To calculate that acceleration, let's define this as the y-axis and this as the x-axis with respect to the block. So the sum of the forces in the x direction is equal to Fg. That is the only force acting along the x-axis parallel to the incline. And this is always equal to ma. Fg is mg sine theta. So we could divide both sides by m. So those variables will cancel. Thus the acceleration for this problem part a is simply equal to g sine theta. So that's how you can calculate the acceleration of a block that's sliding down a frictionless incline. Now for those of you who might be wondering how we can get these equations, here's what you can do. So draw a line that is parallel to the normal force. We're going to create a triangle where W is the hypotenuse of that triangle. So let me just put this in a different color so you can see it. So there's the triangle and here's the right angle. And this angle theta is equivalent to this angle. So across theta, that's the opposite side. We know that sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So I'm going to redraw this triangle. So the hypotenuse is the weight force, which is mg. This is theta. Across theta, this is going to be mg sine theta. And on the adjacent side, cosine is associated with the adjacent side. So this side here, that's going to be mg cosine theta. So notice that fg is equal to this component of gravity because that component is parallel to fg. So that's why fg is equal to mg sine theta. The normal force balances this portion of the triangle. So that's why the normal force is mg cosine theta. So that's how you can get those equations from uh, that free body diagram. Now, part B, a block remains at rest on an incline. So the block is still on the incline. We're still going to have the normal force, the wave force, and FG. Those forces will always be present for an object on an incline. But this time, in part B, the block is not sliding down uh, the frictionless incline. It's remaining at rest. The only way it can remain at rest is if the net force in the x direction is zero. So there must be some other force that's preventing it from sliding down. And that force must be equal in magnitude to Fg. So what is that force? Well, that can only be friction. Friction opposes motion. But remember, there's two types of frictional forces whenever you, whenever you have objects like sliding past each other. You have kinetic friction when they're sliding past each other and static friction when they're at rest. So because the block is at rest, static friction is the force that is going against Fg that's preventing it from sliding down. So in this example, Fs is equal to Fg. Now, the static frictional force is less than or equal to mu s times the normal force. So static friction is an inequality. It's going to match Fg up to a maximum. So let's say that maximum is 100. 
if we were to make a table that shows the relationship between fg and fs, if fg is 0, fs is 0. If fg is 20, fs is 20. If fg is 60, fs is going to match it to 60. If fg is 100, fs will be 100. If fg is 110, static friction has been exceeded, the block will begin to slide down, and you're not going to have static friction anymore. You're going to have kinetic friction. So static friction will match fg up to a certain limit, at which point the block will begin to slide down. But this is the free body diagram for part B. Now, part C, a block slides down an incline with friction present at constant acceleration. So let's delete this. So there's constant acceleration, which means FG has to be greater than friction. And because the block is sliding down, we no longer have static friction, but we have kinetic friction. So FK is going to be smaller than FG. Now, how can we calculate this acceleration? Well, we can write this equation. The sum of the forces in the x direction is going to be FG minus FK. The net force in the x direction will always equal MA. We know FG is MG sine theta. FK, that's mu K times the normal force. By the way, static friction FS is mu S times the normal force. But notice that it's an inequality. It's going to match up, it's going to match FG up to a certain limit. FK does not have that inequality. It's simply equal to mu K times the normal force. So this is a fixed value. It doesn't depend on the value of FG. So make sure you're aware of that difference in between FS and FK. So FK is going to be mu K times the normal force. And the normal force is mg cosine theta. So we can just replace Fn with mg cosine theta. Since each term contains m, we can divide every term by m. Therefore, the acceleration in the x direction for this example is going to be g sine theta minus mu k g cosine theta. So that's how you can calculate it for this problem, that is for part C. Now let's move on to part D. A rope is used to pull a block up an incline against friction at constant velocity. Feel free to try that problem. So let's draw a different incline. This time we're going to draw an incline that goes up as the block moves to the right. So let's put the block here. And we're going to pull the block up an incline. So this is going to be our tension force. We still have our downward weight force. And we're still going to have the normal force, which is going to be less than the weight force as long as there's an angle. The only way they'll be equal if the angle is zero. So the angle is not zero for an incline. Thus, the normal force has to be less than the weight force. Now, we're pulling it up against friction at constant velocity. So because it's moving, we're dealing with kinetic friction. And because the velocity is constant, there's no acceleration. So the forces are balanced in the x direction which means that tension force is equal to FK. So if we wish to calculate the tension force in this case, we could say the sum of the forces in the X direction is equal to positive T minus FK. Now, because the acceleration is zero, 
and this equals ma. m times 0 is 0, so this is 0. Add an fk to both sides, we get that fk is equal to t, or t is equal to fk. And fk, it's mu k times the normal force, and the normal force on an incline is mg cosine theta. So for this specific problem, where we're pulling the block up an incline against friction at constant velocity, the tension force is mu k mg cosine theta. 